Right, in this video we're going to be looking at um, different types of financial markets. Um, what I would say first of all, remember a market is where buyers and sellers come together to trade. All we're looking at trading here is um, assets that have a monetary value if you like. Now um, in terms of different financial markets, quite a lot of these things we've, we've already looked at before to be honest in the last videos, but it's worth thinking about them in a slightly different way. So we have money markets, we have capital markets, we also have foreign exchange markets which we'll call forex, we also have commodity markets, and then last but not least we have, well there's two more I beg your pardon, we have derivative markets which is kind of an offshoot of some of the other ones to a certain extent, and we have insurance markets as well. Okay, so let's think about what these different things are then. What we'll do, we'll start with the one that I put down first, which is the money market. What we're looking at in the money market is short-term borrowing. And lending. Okay, now this could be done by um, governments, for example. It could be done by businesses. It could even be done between banks. So if I was listing a few of these different words, which I think it's worth for you guys to know, when the government borrows short term, they can issue what we call treasury bills. Okay, people that buy treasury bills um, will expect to be repayable within 91 days. So it helps the government with sort of short term cash flow problems, if you like. Um, bills of exchange is short term borrowing that is done by businesses. Okay, now these could be done for credit on goods that have been bought, for example. And what business, what, 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 what can be done with these? They can actually be traded. Okay, so say for example, a firm um, has sold goods to a business and that business hasn't yet paid, then what that business that is owed the money can do, they can in effect trade that debt onto other people so they can get hold of their money now. It's a way for supplies to get hold of money that they're owed quicker, if you like. Okay, so it might help them overcome short-term sort of financial problems themselves. Um, we could also be looking at the interbank market. Okay, all we're looking at here is lending between banks, borrowing between banks. Okay, so banks that have got short-term cash flow problems, for example, they can borrow from each other, which can help, again, help them sh short out short term cash flow problems. So under the money market and when you think about it we could be looking at governments that borrow through um, treasury bills, we could be looking at businesses that borrow through bills of exchange and we could be looking at banks that lend to each other which we call the in in interbank lending if you like. Uh, capital markets is more to do with long term financing and we're generally looking here at something which is not going to be repaid within a year. So long-term lending tends to be more than a year. Now the government and businesses can create bonds. Okay, so we have government bonds, we have corporate bonds for example. And the idea will be it's when governments or businesses want to make long-term loans, they can create bonds which again will generate some kind of return. But the people that buy them know that they've got these for a long period of time. So people, for example, will buy bonds in the government's debt, which helps the government fund big budget deficits every year. Um, we could also be looking here at shares, so equity markets, for example, so businesses can raise money through shares. I think what's worth pointing out that bonds and shares can often be traded second hand. Okay, so the original person that bought a bond might want their money back, so they might resell that bond to somebody else who will have some kind of value. Uh, and honestly, the same with shares as well. People buy stocks and shares. Um, a lot of this stuff is sort of sold second hand by investment banks, so speculating, wanting to make some kind of profit. Uh, the next one that I want to talk about is foreign exchange, which is obviously where you're looking to trade currencies. Okay, now what we can have here, we can have spot deals, which is where people buy and sell currency straight away. 
and we can also have forwards or futures where people try to lock in at particular prices now to buy things in the future or speculating on currency movements uh, only a very small section of this is actually people buying and selling goods and there'll be some of it linked to foreign direct investment as well people buying and selling currency for that reason but again a lot of this will be done by investment banks that are looking to um, speculate short term on currency changes to make a quick profit um, commodity markets uh, one i took students on to on, on a trip of a couple of years ago was one to the london metal exchange that trades in lots of different commodities okay now again um we have spot deals where people look to buy things straight away um agree on a con on an immediate exchange and we have futures where again people try to lock in at future prices and again a bit like the foreign exchange market and capital markets a lot of the trading here tends to be quite speculative so it's people looking to make quick profits and invest from investment banks for example um derivatives all derivatives are it's where the value of something is determined by something else okay so if you were to buy for example um shares in a business for example then the value will be dictated by the profitability of that business um a future on a commodity will be dictated by expected changes in price across time of that particular commodity um derivative markets tend to link to capital foreign exchange and commodity markets so it's the three that we've just been talking about basically okay so if you're looking for a textbook definition of derivatives where we trade a financial instrument based on the value of other financial instruments so all that basically means is that um, people might agree a forward on the foreign exchange market its value will be determined by how we expect that currency to move in the future okay so if i bought a forward at a particular low price right now if people think um the value of currency is going to increase in the short term or medium term then that forward carries more value and i, I could trade it and make more money with it and the last one is insurance markets okay now when it comes to insurance markets people like you and me individuals businesses and governments will buy insurance to cover us from all sorts of different things um i think it's also worth pointing out though as well that we have the reinsurance market okay imagine you're um, a particular insurance company and you've um offered a lot of house insurance deals to people in an area that's got lots of natural disasters so imagine los angeles for example well that means you've got a lot of potential risk sat around so what might happen is um, some insurance firms might resell that insurance onto other companies to spread the risk around okay so you're in effect selling that liability on so say for example you had a thousand insurance deals um, on property in los angeles you might decide to sell 200 of them onto another company to reduce that liability in case something nasty should happen so guys what you've got there is an overview of the different types of financial markets so money markets capital markets foreign exchange commodities derivatives and the insurance markets